K-Word Warriors, you are amazing. I'm in my favorite place, my little cubby hole with my books all around me. I love books. And there's books over there. And there's books back over here. You can't see them all, but there's books everywhere in this room. And it's the same way at home. I just love books. I don't think there's enough time in eternity for me to get to read all of them, but I'm going to give it a good shot. How about you? 1 John 3, 8 is where we're going to start today. And if I was going to name this, it probably would be, you're free. You're free. The verse says, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Do you understand that millions of people are being held hostage in their minds by the lies that Satan planted there? And they're, they're incarcerated, locked up. In a, they're in a cage. Their minds and emotions are caged, and they can't seem to break free from that. They're slaves, prisoners, detainees, whatever you want to call it, but they are under arrest and at the mercy of their conqueror, and that's Satan. It, it reminded me, I, I gave an illustration one time because I had so many people coming in and saying, I I don't know what to do. I, I can't do this and I can't do that. And I said, why can't you do that? Well, because the enemy has been planting seeds in their head, basically. But what I noticed was, I said, it's like it's like you're in a prison that has three sides. And you look behind you and 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 if you looked behind you, you'd see there are no bars back there. There's bars on this side, bars on this side, bars in front, but you're free. Just turn around. You are free because of what Jesus Christ did you did for you. I can't tell you the number of people that I talk to every day that battle this. And even though they belong to Jesus and legally they're, 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 they have every right to freedom. They are in spiritual bondage. Do you know what I'm talking about? It, in this three-sided prison, they can't see that they're free. All they can see are all these lies that Satan plants in their head. Satan is always looking for a way into somebody's life so he can make an inroad in their minds. Whether they're involved in a, a hidden sin or they're not obeying the things that Jesus told them to obey, or maybe they, they're holding unforgiveness in their heart or watching and reading things they shouldn't, they have given the devil a, a foothold, a stronghold. And he, and he opens, he'll take the tiniest little bit. If you get goofed up and you're not walking 100% with Jesus, you open your mind to the things of the enemy. That's why, see, the mind is the devil's playground. It really is. And and once he plants a stronghold, uh, a stronghold, I, I was reading about them one time, and in a in the ancient days, they, they would call a stronghold when they had a, uh, it was the place where the enemy had built a tower, and they were at the top of that tower, and it was held so strongly, they couldn't get up and and, and infiltrate the way they wanted to. Well, in 2 Corinthians 10, 4, it says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That means they're not fleshly. You don't fight in the flesh. You don't fight with your mouth. You don't fight with your fist. You fight in the spirit realm. And it says they are mighty through God. And this is a violent word, pulling down of strongholds. It's not just, well, I'll knock that down. No, it's a violent word. And it means to pull it down with all force. That's what we've got to do with the strongholds that are built in our head. Some of you have heard words that are lies that you took as your own, and because of that, you can't move past them. It's a stronghold because once a lie is in somebody's head, it's almost, almost, almost impossible to remove. Almost. The word for destroy. He came to destroy the works of the devil. Well, the word dis destroy in the Greek is luo, L-U-O. And it, it's an interesting word. It means to untie or unloose. That's a basic word. In classical literature, uh, it would refer to people that were being set free, released, freed from difficulties or burdens that they carried. In the New Testament, the word luo, L 
U-O, was used to depict an untying uh, of sandals. In, in, in Mark 1, 7, they were untying sandals. In uh, Matthew 21, 2, they were unfastening a, a donkey. In Matthew, uh, nope, in John eleven forty four, 44, Lazarus, he was being loosed from the grave clothes. In Acts twenty two thirty, we know that, that Paul's chains were being taken away. But in Revelation 5, 2, it says this, And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? L-U-O, Luo, is used in a lot of instances, but Luke 3, 16 is the best one I found. And it says this, It's when John the Baptist says, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose, of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. This is a picture, and I want you to get this picture. It's a picture of someone reaching down and one by one unloosening the, the ties that go up on a sandal. You know, it wasn't just a flat sandal. It wrapped around their leg. And so it's a picture of him unloosing every one of those of those ties and the shoe just fell right off when he did that in our first scripture it said satan come jesus comes to destroy the works of the devil you know what that means he comes to untangle us and undo all those ties that have got us bound because they're not real. They're in our head. They're not real. And he's saying, I got to untangle them from that snare of the enemy. Ooh, I love that. I love that. He's unraveling Satan's hold on us. If I read it according to what we know in the Greek, it would sound something like this. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested so that he might untie people from all the works of the devil, unraveling Satan's hold on them until the devil's work in people's lives are utterly destroyed and the hostages are set free. Woo! I like that. Hostages are set free. I read it, and, and it, when Jesus died on the cross, dead, buried, resurrected, sitting at the right hand of God the Father, he died for your freedom. The Bible says, whom the Son is free, is free indeed. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Well, he set us free. Do you need to be set free? I mean, in your mind, because you've already been set free if you know Jesus as Lord and Savior. But now you need to say, God, what if, what has he planted in my head that's holding me back from serving you, from being what I was called to do? What is in my mind that's wrong? You know, I, I talked about before, I have had thoughts planted in my head that sounded real. They sounded real. And so I bought into them and I could see my life going in that direction until one day I said, that's enough. God, that is enough. And with his help, the help of the Holy Spirit, I could break free. I want you to break three, free to break three today. <laughs> Say that three times. I want to see you break free. Let's pray. Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I speak over these people. Every mind, every heart, every ear that's listening, Father God, I pray that you begin to reveal to these people what lie they're living and, and believing, Lord, and show them it was planted years ago and it has been reinforced through the years by the enemy. Lord, you, you are the deliverer. And Lord, we want you right now to come into our lives, set us free so that we can walk in the freedom that Jesus died for. In your precious name, amen. Amen, sister. All right, I'll see you in the morning. Same time, same station. Bless you.